Good day, hey, this is Sedlo, and welcome to another DCS Mission Editor tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, emergency locator transmission after a pilot ejects. Now an emergency locator transmitter uh, transmits a signal on 121.5 or 243.0 or both and also other frequencies but we won't get into that because it's not applicable to DCS. Uh, basically it transmits a noise um, so people can find you. It's like, hey, I've been shot down, I'm on the ground, come help me. And you can home into those transmissions and rescue your pilot. Or, you know, capture the pilot because it's a radio transmission, everyone can hear it. Let's go with uh, three methods of doing this. Um, and uh, you know what, there's probably more, but this is the three that I sort of know. Can make a trigger. We're going to make a repetitive action. Let's name it. We're going to go ELT on. On event here, we're going to say on eject. Now for conditions, we're going to go flag is false. We're going to call this ELT. Of course, you can name it whatever you want. Don't worry, this is going to make sense in just a sec. So when someone ejects and this flag is false, we're going to to a sound to all and the sound to all we're going to do is ELT now if you don't have an ELT uh, sound sample of your own you can just uh, steal it off this video here I'm going to play it for you in one second ready there you go in real life, this is a continuous noise. It goes off until the battery dies, but that would get annoying in DCS. So we're just, I just do a two or three second thing. All right, one more thing under actions, we are going to turn ELT flag on. So if we leave it just like this, when someone ejects and the flag is false, the sound will go and it will turn ELT on, which will prevent this from happening again. But we want it to happen again because we want it to go off every time someone ejects. So we're going to do a new trigger, a switch condition. We're going to say ELT off. Or on again, whatever. Name it whatever you want. You don't have to name it if you don't want to. But we're going to go time since flag. Now time since flag ELT. And it's more than five seconds. We're going to turn that flag off. All right, the loop is complete. So again, when someone checks, this is false. The sound will play. It will turn this flag on. Five seconds after that flag on, it will turn off again. And then this will happen again next time someone checks. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's uh, give it a go. We're gonna save our mission. We're going to go fly. And we'll see. You're going to have to excuse me as well. My uh, cat is acting very strangely, making a lot of noise. So um, if that happens, just ignore it. All right. Now, um, hmm, how do I explain? OK. We've got a sound to all, so this is going to go off no matter what radio frequency we have on. So let's go Fox 3. Hit this uh, bear. Hopefully they'll start ejecting. Hopefully we'll hit that bear. Yeah. He's going down. Someone's ejected from it, and the ELT noise has gone off. Oh, look at that. The other plane was hit as well, and they've ejected. And as you can see, that sound goes off. Now couple drawbacks to this. First of all, we use the sound to all, right? So anyone on this map from down here in Tbilisi to up here in Ukraine to over here in Romania is going to hear that. Um, not really the way it works because it's a small transmitter. You're not going to hear it for uh, very far, uh, especially if there's line of sight issues like terrain and stuff. 
the other thing is that the real life that that broadcast only happens on certain frequencies and using a sound to all or sound to group or whatever um, you don't have to be on that frequency to hear it which is uh, not real so there's uh, quickly a little thing you can do instead of using a sound to all you can use a radio transmission and you find the radio transmission here under R for radio forgot though we got to make a zone so let's plop a zone down here we're gonna call it uh, ELT zone let's change that trigger or well let's add that trigger radio transmission my gosh we're well, having a hard time seeing my screen right now the Sun is coming in and anyway Radio transmission is going to happen from the ELT zone. Let's change this to 243.0. We're going to say it's a 5 watt transmission. We're going to go ELT noise because we always put names where names are there. And we're going to select the ELT. Now, this noise will happen, but only on a frequency 243.0, uh, just like it is in real life. So let's uh, save this. Let's fly. Um, now, most aircraft don't monitor guard on their own in DCS. So you have to um, ensure that your radio is monitoring guard. It's one of the first things you do after you turn it on. So in the F-16, you press COM1. You see on the DED how it says main. Go right sequence dauber here. Change that to both. Now your radio is uh, monitoring and transmitting on 305, but it's also monitoring on uh, 243.0. So let's uh, show you how that Locked. works. Secret is you're going to hear it just like you did before. And just to show you how it is, go sequence again on the dauber, back to main. We're no longer monitoring guard. so. We're probably not going to hear the next guy eject. You know what? I don't think anyone survived that one, so they didn't eject. But anyway, you, oh no, they did. See, they went out, and there was no tone hurt because their radio was not monitoring guard. Bad pilot. Okay, what are the disadvantages of this system? Well. First of all, that radio transmission only emanates from the zone that we put down here. And um, you're going to have some line of sight issues because um, it only happens here. Now, what if you have uh, an aircraft that uh, ejects over Sochi? Will they hear this radio transmission? Maybe not likely because it's all the way over here and it's set on the ground. Will somebody over here in Ninvodi, if they eject, will that be heard anywhere around here? No, because the line of sight is blocked by the mountains. Someone flying here will hear it, but not over here. So, getting more realistic, but not quite there. Now, uh, Sedlo, what is the most realistic way to do it? Well, for my money, I think the most realistic way to do it is to have a radio transmission happen at the point in space where the ejection occurs. Can you do that with the mission editor? No, you cannot. You need to rely on scripting. Scripting, you say? That sounds difficult. Well, yes it is, but it's not because I'm going to show you what you need to know. First of all, let's uh, clear out our triggers here. We're going to need to find a way to put the ELT uh, file, the, trans the, the actual sound file, into the mission. There's a couple ways you can do that. Some people, what they do is they go on mission start, and again, name our trigger, even though we're not going to be using this one, they will go, you can go make a sound to country. 
and you pick a country that is not in the mission let's say egypt and then we go sound to all and we save now what this is is this trigger um, on the mission start will play a sound to anyone who is the country egypt on in the mission since there are none nobody's going to hear it but that sound file is now in the mission file the ms file and um, then you can reference it with scripting i don't like to do that i like to um, put the mission files in directly into the ms file i use 7-zip to do so uh, first of all you just now I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to talk to you about it because I had a hard time getting video for that. But basically, you open your MIS file in 7-zip, and you'll see there's a folder called L10N, and there's a couple other files there. Right-click, create a new folder, call it audio. Um, call it whatever you want, but just you'll have to reference it in the script. And make sure uh, the capitalization is there. Uh, it's case-sensitive. I like to do all caps, but... You can do whatever you want as long as you have the exact same spelling in the uh, in the script. It's fine. All right, so we've put that ELT file. We'll drop it into the audio folder in the MIS file, and we'll close 7-zip. We'll open up the mission here in DCS, and we're going to go on mission start. We are going to instead of doing a sound to country we're going to go up here and say do script and it puts this little box here which script are you referring to well let's um i'm going to pull it up here with a uh, a um just a, a screenshot of the, the the script here i use notepad plus plus for this uh, you can use whatever you want really um Basically, this is it. Um, we're going to copy and paste this into the script box. Now, I'm just going to kind of go over what it says here. It's a function that whenever an event of ejection happens, it will get the point in space and time where the pilot who ejected is. And then it will transmit a, uh, a file, elt.ogg, that's our elt noise. And you see how it's in the audio folder make sure this is the exact spelling of yours the quotation marks have to be here everything has to be exact now with scripting you get one character wrong it's not going to work that's the that's the hard part but as long as you uh you have it all correct this is going to work just fine so that file will play where will it play it'll play at the point in space where the, the uh the person ejected am mode modulation it's false here. It's not going to uh, repeat itself. It's just going to play once on 243.0. Now, in the scripting uh, here, there's never a decimal involved. It's always a uh, number, 243.000.000. It's nine numbers. Make sure they're all there. Don't put a decimal in it. Five watts, and then a name. Uh, make it unique. That's what I've done. So let's uh, copy and paste this into our... Mission. Go. And that's it. Okay, here we are back in the mission. Let's uh, lock up this Russian here. Lock. Got him locked. Let's set our radio to monitor guard. That's done. Box three. On for the wrong guy. Go for this guy. Oh, it doesn't matter. Somebody's ejected. Anyway, they've ejected. The radio transmission is played, and all is good in the world. <laughs>